and welcome back to my channel. First things first, let's address the elephant in the room. I'm wearing a microphone. I don't know what's come over me, guys. Maybe it's this lockdown thing. I've got too much time on my hands, but basically I got this for Christmas and <laughs> never got it out of the packet. And then I just thought I'm sick of editing videos where all I can hear is the wind. So yeah, I'm a bit distracted by it, not gonna lie. Let me know what the sound's like, guys, if I'm too loud. If you hate the sound of my voice, just put it in a, in a comment below, but it'd be nice. Anyway, moving on to the video, which is why you're all here. Hopefully you are all here. Today, I'm going to take you through all of my tack in a kind of tack haul manner. So I've had loads of requests for this video. I didn't know if people were gonna watch it. I didn't know if people would find it interesting, which is why I kind of haven't done it all this time. But then I just sat down and thought, actually, I've watched a million and one of those videos with other people and really enjoyed them. So I thought, why not give it a go? This is my tack room behind me. I'm gonna drag all of my tack out that's like currently in use or recently in use. All of the monkey bridles hanging on the walls and stuff. I'm just gonna, just gonna leave them there. Don't wanna disturb them, guys. I'm gonna take them outside, give them a good clean, talk you through that, tell you what I do, maybe give you a few juicy close-ups, and then I will talk you through all of the tack that I have. So let's quickly reverse back into here. This is my tack room, everybody. So I've got saddles along that back wall, whoop, and saddles there. I've got like my lunging equipment and stuff. I'm not gonna take that out, sorry guys. These are like the monkey bridles I was telling you about. I'm gonna leave them there. And then I've got all of my bridles along this wall here, and then hat and various bits and things down there. So I'm gonna drag all this outside and catch up with you out there. scary corridor that the tack room's down. I've got my final saddle here. Do you want to quickly see ponies? There's Bear, there's Dee Dee, and there's Jenny. Two buckets and some tack cleaner in there. Also, saddle horse. Okay, so all the tack is sorted. Now I need to go and find tack cleaning stuff and get some buckets of hot water. It's way too bright. Okay, so I have sorted all the tack out. All my numbers are off and ready to go for a wash. All of my bridles are kind of separated. I'm not gonna take them apart to clean them because there's so many of them. <laughs> and I can't be bothered if I'm being completely honest with you guys. I've got all my saddles lined up there. I've got my buckets of water. I've got my girth taken off. I'm too hot. I'm too hot and I want another biscuit. Right, I'll be back in a minute, guys, to get this going. I need to put a t-shirt on, I'm sorry. This is a polite notice to all viewers to please turn down the brightness on their devices that they're watching this vlog on. The following scene may be disturbing for viewers with sensitive eyes. Right, guys, I'm in my t-shirt, so honestly, apologies for the brightness. I've got my shades on. Maybe you should put yours on because these arms are pasty. Buckets of water. Both hot to warm water, don't have it too hot because it can discolour your bridles, as I found out. Um, one soapy, this one, that's for like girths and synthetic things. I don't know if you should put soap on your leather, but I'm guessing not, so don't know, don't listen to me. That one's non-soapy. So I always take off all of the bits, even if I'm not taking my tack apart, I'm always going to take the bits off. Give them a good clean. Tack cleaner. So I've got two here neither of which are my favourite one, but I can't find my favourite one. 
Um, so this is a NAF one, this is a Lincoln one. I like the sort of soft saddle soap stuff, not the bar stuff that mum used to have in pony club days. I had it as well. <laughs> I'm old too. Sponges in there. Cloth for doing the first little wipe over with water. I think that's everything. I think I'll get the time lapse going, get some nice shots of me cleaning tack and then uh, sit back for four hours and clean all this mess. Okay, so that is the tack cleaning marathon officially over. Thank goodness. That took so long. I wasn't prepared for it to take that long, not gonna lie to you guys. Thank you, Hobbit, for coming and helping me because otherwise I would still be here come the morning. I will quickly talk you through what I do. So everything gets wiped over with the warm water and a cloth. It just gets rid of all the grease, all of the dirt. For the bridles, if I'm not taking them apart, like I said I wasn't going to do, I will take all of the straps out of their keepers. This way there's no leather that's not getting any tack cleaner on. Uh, there's no bits like hiding underneath that aren't going to get cleaned and aren't going to get supple and therefore could be dangerous further down the line. Also gives you a chance to check on all the stitching, just make sure everything's intact and no accidents are going to happen as a result. After I've done that, I use a, oops, jeez. After I've done that, I get a tack cleaner of my choice, wipe that all over with a sponge, get in all the nooks and crannies. Same applies with the saddles, they all get wiped over, get rid of all the grease, all the dirt, and then they get wiped over with this. Saddles have their covers put back on and then that is tack cleaning over. However, for you guys, I'm gonna quickly talk you through all of my tack. I'll talk you through the saddles because I think that's what people are most interested in. I'll tell you who wears what and bridles, again, tell you who wears what and why I have certain bits and certain horses. Also something some people may have noticed is that every single one of my bridles is a caverson. So I'll also talk about my reasoning behind that too. Welcome to my saddlery. Okay, 
guys, I'm filming this for a second time because I filmed 12 minutes of footage. I need sunglasses. My children, here they are. What I was saying is I filmed 12 minutes of talking about these saddles, 12 minutes with the microphone on and went to listen back to it. No, it just turned off. I don't know what is happening with my technology today, but everything's just turning off and it's not very good. Four people comment, they are fully charged as well. Are you ready for take two of me talking about my darling children? I'm not gonna lie, it is really nice seeing them all out here clean and together. <laughs> that sounds so weird, doesn't it? I just really love my saddles. They're kind of a bit of a collector's item for me. I just, yeah, they're very special to me. So let's jump straight in. I'm gonna try and go a bit quicker than I did in my last one. So this first one here, that I am currently tapping. This is Bear's dressage saddle now that she competes in. However, it has also been used on Dee and Lara and pretty much all of the horses that I've ever done a dressage test on. This is because it's got a flexi tree, so it kind of like, it does that. So it kind of fits anything. So that's really, really useful because every time you put it on something, it kind of just adjusts and moves to the horse that it's on. It's also got, if you look underneath the saddle, this kind of synthetic bottom, which means it's really good for cold backed horses. So when Dee was quite cold backed, it was great on her because it just warms up on their back a lot faster than leather does. Same for Lara, she really likes the saddle because she's very, very cold backed. So it was really useful on her. Unfortunately, guys, I don't actually know the brand of this saddle. They're a really small English company. I got it years ago through a local saddler and I, I don't know the brand of it, it doesn't say on it, all it says is HS, so I'm really sorry. Moving swiftly on, this is my posh dressage saddle, my kind of posh competition dressage saddle. This fits Jam and D. it's too big for Bear, unfortunately, like lengthwise, it's actually not wide enough for Bear. I really like riding in this saddle because it kind of tucks you in in all the right places. It's got a nice high cantle, it's got a really big knee roll, so it holds you in place. It makes you feel like you've got that really nice dressage position, so it's lovely to ride in. This is an Akeep. I don't know the model, but I know it's quite a new one. I've not had this saddle very long. Really, really nice saddle, big fan of this one. Next up, I have a little Black Country Black saddle. Also, just gonna interject real quick, if people haven't noticed that I've done this in colour order, I'm disappointed because I spent ages picking out the browns. It goes from black to light brown, not really light brown, but the lightest brown I have. And it also goes from dressage to jump. So please appreciate all the time and effort that's gone into that. Thank you. Where was I? So next up we have this black country black saddle. This is kind of like a working hunter slash GP saddle. It's basically got no knee roll, so it's quite difficult to ride in, but it's a really, really useful saddle to have because it's one of those saddles that kind of just fits anything. Interesting story behind this saddle. I actually got it when I was looking for a jumping saddle for Dee. I was hoping to get like a nice Devaku or a Keep at the time, but she was so weak and so stroppy that I couldn't get that kind of saddle. They were just too long in the back for her. They didn't fit her at the time. So I had to get this saddle, which really is not an eventing saddle, but it is the saddle that I did my first years of eventing in on D. It was the only saddle I could find that was short enough for her, that also fitted her, that she really liked going in. So it was one of those ones that I kind of had to put what I wanted out the window and just focus on the horse and get a saddle that fitted her. So for that reason, I'll never get rid of this saddle because it's really useful to have. I know I'll probably have more horses similar to D who are a bit weak over the back and just need a bit of a shorter saddle. So that's staying with me, even though it's currently not being used. Next up, I have this black Akeep monoflap jump saddle. This was fitted to Jam and Lara last October. Since then, Lara's obviously been out of work and Jam has actually changed shape so much that this doesn't really fit her anymore. Although I haven't tried it on her in about two months. And I think now she's really muscled up after I changed her into a different saddle. I think potentially where she was fat when this saddle fitted her in October, she's hopefully lost that fat, but then rebuilt it with muscle. So fingers crossed, it is gonna fit her sometime soon. 
this is a really really smart saddle and I got it for a great price so I'm not going to part with it I'll just keep it and wait until I have another horse come along that fits it well it's nice and forward cut it's got nice knee rolls to hold you in place it's lovely to jump in very very comfy and it's quite shallow on the back so you've not got this big cantle kind of getting in the way obviously that's great for dressage not so much for jumping Moving on, I have my little Kenton Master saddle. This is currently what Jam wears now. It's a brown jump saddle. It's not monoflap. I do prefer monoflap saddles normally for jumping. Actually, I've been really impressed with this saddle. I had to get it, like I said, because my Akeep didn't fit Jam anymore. I kind of just stumbled across this saddle through a horse I had on livery, and it just so happened to fit Jam, so I'm really pleased that I actually bought it off them. Again, it's not designed for eventing, it's not really forward cut enough for cross country and it hasn't got a big enough kind of knee roll and it's got nothing holding your leg behind. But saying that, it's really comfy to ride in and I've actually gotten quite used to jumping in it. Again, it's a similar story to D with the black country saddle. I just had to put what I wanted out the window and just find a saddle that fitted the horse. I find with young horses, it's so important that the saddle fits them well because as soon as they start feeling a bit of pain on their backs, they just don't want to do it anymore. They don't understand. I think young horses, if they get the slightest pinch, they're just like, I don't want to ever do that again. So you've got to be really smart with young horses and make sure the saddles are fitting them well. And as soon as you think it's not, change it. It's not to say that saddle won't ever fit them again. I'm hoping the Akeep will fit Jam one day, but I had to have this little saddle in between just to keep Jam happy. Next up, we have my lovely Devaku. I'm a massive fan of Devakus. I think because it was like the first proper competition saddle I ever had. When I was a working pupil for an event rider, I got my first ever Devaku through her. I managed to get it quite cheaply because I worked for her, obviously. And that was my first eventing saddle that I had on Lara. I did have to sell that saddle last year, which was really sad, but I bought this new Devaku with the money that we got from that. This one is absolutely lovely. Again, it is amazing to ride in, nice and forward cut. It holds you all in place. Very nice to look at, as you can see. One of my fave things is this blue piping that it has, and they also match my Shire's Compositi stirrups, which is, I'm not normally a matchy-matchy person, but it does make me smile, I won't lie, guys. Devaku is actually Dee's jumping and eventing saddle. Last but not least, I have another Akeep Synergy, but this time in brown. This is Bear's jumping saddle. This was such a special find because it was just when Bear was starting to get quite serious eventing. She'd started BE and she was starting to get placed quite a lot. And I had had my regional final qualifiers. So I knew that Badminton was on the cards. So I wanted to make sure I had a saddle that actually fitted her to jump in. So I was really lucky to come across this saddle because it's extra wide, but only 16 and a half inches long, which is quite a rare combination. Obviously, these saddles are more designed for horses to be doing an extreme sport, so it can be quite hard to find them for ponies. Saying that, the saddle market is definitely changing, like more of these sporty saddles are being made for ponies because obviously you've got this amazingly wide market of pony trials ponies and adults riding ponies and kids riding ponies all competing to quite a high level. But it can just be tricky to find them short enough sometimes and wide enough because bear's quite round. So it was an amazing find to get this one. For that reason, I will probably hang on to this one because realistically, I'm gonna have more short, fat, wide ponies in my life. For example, Brinny, who is Bear's half-sister, hopefully will event in this saddle one day. So these are all of my children, I mean saddles. They're really, really special to me. They're kind of a bit of a collector's item. I really love and cherish them all. I know I'm incredibly lucky to have such a nice special range of saddles. For that reason, I do want to really look after them and prolong their life for as long as possible. They're obviously not cheap, nice quality saddles, so it is really important to clean them regularly, look after them, put their saddle covers on, just be nice to them, just love them guys. Cherish and love your saddles, please. Like I said before, a lot of these I'm gonna try and hang on to. Because I do a lot of producing of young horses, I have a lot of people send me horses, it's really nice to have a bit of a variety of saddles so that when a horse comes to me, I've got things that I can try on it if the saddle that it's come with perhaps doesn't fit or if I've just bought a new horse and I need a saddle for it. I've got things in the bank that I can try on it before rushing out and buying a new saddle. So that's really why I like to have a bit of a hoard of saddles. That and the fact that they're really pretty. 
Anyway, I'm going to take you through my bridles and my girths quickly, and then I need to go and ride because you, can you see the sun's like the sun's going to go down in a couple of hours, and I've, I need to go and ride a horse. Okay, time to go through my bridles. So in no particular order, just the order they've been put down in. This is a Steuben Caverson bridle with a loose ring, sweet iron bit with a lozenge in the middle. This is actually Lara's everyday bridle. You'll see it's a comfort one. I'm a big, big fan of comfort bridles, guys. Just It's just nicer behind their ears and it's softer on their pole. So you'll see there the um, bit just runs over the headpiece there and that is all a single piece. Next we have my Shire's bridle. This is actually Sally's bridle, hence why it's got a nice baby bit on. These Shire's bits are incredible. I've only got two, but I need to go and bulk buy some. They're copper, so they warm up a lot quicker in their mouths. I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about that. There are a lot of bits doing this, but Shire's are doing it at an amazing price. So I really recommend checking out these bits. So Sally just has a jointed fulmer snaffle. I like using the fulmers on the youngsters. It just helps a bit with the steering. This bridle's really pretty. It's got nice stitching on it, as you can see there. Really nice. And it's also a comfort headpiece with the little cutout ear bit. So it just sits more comfortably around their ears. It doesn't dig into them. So it's just making them a lot comfier. Next up we have Jam's competition bridle or Jam's dressage bridle. I kind of changed this around so because my dressage saddles are black, Dee sometimes wears this one for dressage and then Jam will wear Dee's brown one for jumping. So this one has just got a little egg butt snaffle. Again, it's the Shire's ones with the copper. So Jam isn't in a loose ring snaffle at the minute because I wanted her in a fixed one because she just needed to learn to take the bit forward. Loose rings are amazing, I really like them. But Jam's at a stage where she needed to take the bit a little bit more forward and take up the hand a bit because she'd drop behind the vertical a little. And fixed snaffles are just meant to be a bit better for that. So I was testing this out and I was actually really pleased with it. I like how she's been going in it. This is a Henry James saddlery bridle. It's got the nice wide comfort headpiece there. This just reduces pressure on the pole, this headpiece. So it is really nice. I'm really pleased with that. It's also got the nice dipped brow band as well. Next to that we have Dee's Henry James saddlery bridle. That is brown. You can probably tell the difference. Dee has a loose ring snaffle with a little French link. She's been really nice in this snaffle. She's kind of stayed in this for a couple of years now. She can be one to kind of take hold of the bit which is why loose ring is really good for her because it's a lot harder for them to take hold of it. Next up, we have Teddy Bear's little bridle. I feel really bad that I've not got Bear a comfort headpiece. I bought this bridle when I first got Bear. It's like a really cheap one just to use it like for a bit and then we were planning on selling her. And I've never got around to replacing it really. So this is her everyday bridle or her dressage bridle. Again, same bit as D. It's just a little loose ring snaffle. So then we have Bear's jumping bridle. This is the same as the Shire's one you've seen that is Sally's. This is also Dora's bridle, so that's why it's got a fulmer on at the moment. It also has bit guards on from when we were doing Jaffa. We just found he was better with bit guards. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, I've been too lazy to take them off, so <laughs> that's why they're still on there. Then we just have a little bridle here. I actually got from a car boot sale. I don't know the brand, but I really like it. It's got a Henry James Saddlery brow band on, but that was only because I needed a bigger brow band on it. Um, this is just a spare bridle. I'll probably use it as a dressage bridle for Dora or Sally when they go competing. So one thing you can probably tell by looking at all of my bridles is that every single one is a Caverson nose band and every single one has a snaffle on. So obviously my bits do change when it comes to going cross country or going galloping or things like that. But day to day, I am really, really keen to try and have horses in a snaffle wherever possible. I think if you overbit your horses from the start and use a severe bit every day, it just loses its effect and then you have to keep going more severe and more severe and more severe. So for that reason, all of my horses go in a snaffle day to day where it's safe to do so. This isn't me preaching saying you should only ride in a snaffle. Of course, that's not always a possibility, but it's something to work towards. If I get a horse sent to me that's very strong, 
I might not start them in a snaffle, but it's certainly an end game of mine to have them in a snaffle. So for example, Lara, when she goes cross country, she goes in a little universal bit, which is obviously stronger than a snaffle. And Dee and Jam both go in a Waterford snaffle. So again, although it's still a snaffle, the Waterford piece, I can't actually show you because I've not got it out here. It's kind of more bobbly and it is stronger than a snaffle. So those are just two bit alterations I make. Something else along those lines is the fact I always have my horses in a Caverson noseband where possible. Again, this is just something that I want to work towards. I'm not saying that everybody should do this because there is a reason that there's other tack available. Some horses can't just go in the Caverson. However, I like to interfere as little as possible with my horses. I don't like the idea of kind of clamping their mouths shut or misusing tack to make them do things a certain way. I don't think it's fair on them. At the end of the day, they're doing a job for us that it's out of the kindness of their own hearts. They don't need to be ridden. So for that reason, where I can, I just put a very simple Caverson noseband on, not too loose because that can cause more issues, but can always get at least two fingers underneath it. So that's my reason behind having Caversons. Obviously, if a horse needs a different bridle or a different cut or anything, that is absolutely fine. But like I said, with the snaffles, this is just my aim for day to day life. Things change in between, but I think if we can work towards having the plainest, simplest tack possible, then that's better for everybody. Quickly show you my girths. These aren't very exciting. I've just got my long girths up there for the saddles that aren't monoflaps. And then my short girths down here in black and brown for my monoflap saddles. You know what? This is actually really comfy. <laughs> I could fall asleep here. That brings me to the end of my video. I'm pretty sure I've forgotten to do stuff, but my phone keeps flashing up at me saying I'm running out of memory and I'm nervous it's going to do it again. So I'm just going to try and use the footage that I've got. I hope this was interesting to watch, guys. It was really requested and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit worried that I've not done it justice, but... You guys will let me know in the comments regardless. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Let me know if you did or not, but please be kind. <laughs> Make sure you like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell and comment. I think those are all the things you need to do. It really does help me out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.